Well, we've started putting the deck on our roof and we're uh, going up the center of the scissor truss first. But one complication that we have with the deck, because it will be our finished and exposed ceiling, the windows on either end of our scissor truss, which is, is very square and very centered in the oval that we created, the windows are not parallel to each other from you know, one side to the other side. So we actually have longer runs on, on, the, on this truss. This truss is the, or that would be our east truss, is actually longer than, than the west truss. So, trust, trust, sorry. So, so anyways, we had a couple options. One, we could run our planks, you know, uh, square from the top down and have a crooked line at the bottom. Or we could run our, our, our planks uh, square to the window, crook it all the way up to the top. But what we decided to do, <laughs> which is harder, and I'm not sure if it gives us a better end product or not, is we're tapering uh, every, every other plank, you know, to make it shorter on, on the west side. So eventually about halfway up will be will be uh, square to the top and we can run up. So, uh, you know, this side we had to lose three inches and three eighths, or three and three eighths of an inch, and the other side we had to lose two inches. So I'm still working on uh, building some, you know, tapering some of our, our uh, two by six tongue and groove. And I'll show you how I do that now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to uh, run this through the table saw and take off three-eighths of an inch off of this side and leave this side full length. So what we've been doing is we have our straight edge. You have to make sure that the, the tongue is not protruding past and get a straight cut on this side. Just tack that on. And then this board isn't as wide as our two by six tongue groove so there's always a uh, you know, a quarter inch sticking out. So if I want to take a, a three-eighths of an inch off this side, I need to measure back uh, a quarter inch plus three-eighths. And that way with this straight edge, I can run it against the guide on the table saw and get a nice straight cut here so we don't have a, a wonky gap in our boards. So cutting three eighths of an inch off looks like that. We were, I tapered the first three at half an inch just because we had so much space to make up. So we lost our groove by cutting it. And you can cut either side off, just whatever uh, would be easier for you to manufacture. You know, we're using a router table with a, a half inch, you know, plunge bit, or I don't know what it's called, uh, and we're just recutting the groove. So this router table, <laughs> if you can call it that, is homemade and probably older than I am. Uh, the plywood, all the glue, <laughs> it's falling apart. So the, the height changes all the time. I haven't constantly adjusted it because uh, it's, just, it's just falling apart. But, you know, I, I, I made a little springy thing here this board with uh, some shim so I could pull the bottom up to try to raise the top. And basically we're just trying to match, you know, the, the depth of the, of the tongue there. And it, it might be a little bit deeper, but it's good.
so now we have, you know, our our wedge shape and our tongue back. So we bought this tongue and groove, uh, you know, special order from Lowe's, and they got it from a local distributor that <laughs> won't sell direct to the public. And it's it's trash. It's absolute garbage. I mean, we were expecting something that you'd have to work with and pound together. But look at the tolerances on that tongue and that groove. I mean, that's just, that's disgusting. Because what we wanted was to put this deck up there and for it to act like it was one solid piece of, of material all the way up. So we've, we're going to kind of stupid extremes <laughs> get to, to use this material since I already sanded and stained everything. Uh, we're, we're filling it with liquid nails mushing it together and hoping that it'll strengthen and make it a less creaky roof but we weren't we didn't get mad enough soon enough as a problem if if we had uh thought about it more carefully we would have sent it back and said no get us something better but we didn't and i <laughs> put all the labor into this so we're working with it all right so i'm up here on the scaffold you're sitting on the deck so I have finished side with my tapered end, right? I'm putting a pretty fat bead in here. I haven't had anything squirt out the front side yet. Uh, hopefully I didn't just jinx myself. Ooh, a lot of squirt out here. Nothing on the bottom. That's pretty awesome. Okay. So I assume this is going to shake the camera like crazy. But I'll show you anyways. What I'm doing is one surface screw. And one of these, uh, you know, galvanized, um, uh, not ring shank, twist shank. Nails. We have a, we have a huge box of these nails, and these screws are like, what are they? They're twenty eight dollars for two hundred and ten of them. So we're trying to conserve our screws a little bit. give it that treatment both sides all the way up so we're trying to open this side up to match the length of this one and let's just see where we're at right now we're 64 and three quarters on this side and oh 64 and three quarters no yeah yeah, 64 and three quarters on this side. So we've done it. We found square. So finally, finally now I can just start cutting squares and uh, get this get this side done. All right, here's what we're doing to pre-cut our uh, triangle wedges for the round roof. So on the the west side of the dome, we're just working around this way. Because that's the most important to block the sun because, oh, it gets so hot in the afternoon. So we already did number one. And so number two wedge is what we're working on here. And what we did is we made the first board. And that's going to you know, go up above the bird block and work our way in. And we secure that to the bottom of the table. And then we have the measurements uh, for... The, the length of each side to find the center of the top of the triangle. <laughs> so, with two tape measures, the west side will be 133 and a sixteenth, and the east side will be one, 135 and 7 eighths. We're going to need to... You know what? I'm going to need to move my board over. Because I'm going to fall off the end of the table here. 
our triangle is going to fall way over here in outer space. So I'm just going to do it the opposite direction with the finished side up. And then that's our center point for the triangle. If I'm going to flip this around, I need to uh, mark the ends. Unclamp this. Set it back. I'm going to go ahead and use some shims to protect our finish here. I'm going to go ahead and double check my measurements. So I'm just holding the tape measure on the corner with some wood on either side. Okay, never mind. Turns out we cut this one uh, backwards. So the finished side is actually going to go up. And we need to finish the unfinished side on the bottom. So let me undo what I just did. Undoing what I did. Well, let's check again. Uh, looks like I changed it slightly. Now this is easy. This is the easiest way you could possibly build a house. I wouldn't recommend not doing it this way. Okay. So now, in our mirror image, 33 and a 16, 35 and 7 eighths, looking good. Easy. Now I'm going to pop some chalk lines and get going. So what I've been doing is I cut the angle on one end of the board, fit it into my, my grouping here, you know, try to figure out where, where uh, the corner needs to be, typically with the straight edge, just so I don't get too close to it and make a mistake. So I don't want to go past that. Then I take my angle. The same angle as I cut on that end, and I cut it somewhere out here. Alright, so the piece I just cut fits in there. Oh no, it's a little bit crooked there. Seems like the high point's at that knot. So I'm going to go the opposite direction. this one. I'm going to cut this one out somewhere over here just to give me some some leeway. So here's the other end. More than enough material to cut off. This one uh, that's just that's just too crooked for a long piece. I'm going to save it and cut a couple uh, short Maybe three short pieces out of it. You see, these are the, the leftovers of, uh, of, of the ends of these boards. So I'm just putting them sort of where they'll fit later in the future. And then I can cut them. This one here, that'll go there nice. This one's too short, obviously. So I need to get another new board. So anyway, that's how I'm doing. I'm trying to limit the waste to this, you know, these little wedges here because this material when we bought this it was uh, nine dollars a stick and so we were what did that work out to I, f I forget it was it was kind of expensive it was it was like 10 cents a square foot or something I don't know don't take my word for that I have no clue what I'm talking about it's hot so we were at around three o'clock and it's almost ooh, 108 or so by this thermometer. Goodness.
I got a pretty wildly uh, accurate cut uh, inside my blue line. So hopefully this will fit. It worked pretty good on the first run. But my dad cut those and he's got a little bit more experience with this stuff. Ugh, that's it for today. It's way too hot. Oh my god. It's almost 212. Two I mean, it's like one, 111 degrees. Goodness. In the shade. Well, we've run out of the initial uh, tongue and groove that we had special ordered from Lowe's. And, you know, we weren't real happy with, with the size of the tongue compared to the size of the groove. So we decided just to, you know, fake some tongue and groove, make it ourselves. Uh, you know, we don't have a shaper and we don't have a, uh, a tongue and groove bit that will do this inch and a half. So what we're doing is, is we're uh, using the groover on the router to cut a slot and we're putting in a piece of plywood and so far I've done you know two of my triangular runs with that and it's working pretty good but the other problem we had was finding yellow pine that we liked uh, went to 84 lumber went all over the place and just didn't nothing was looking very clean you know had, had just a ton of knots and just gnarly as hell and uh, out of desperation <laughs> wound up at Home Depot and bought 2x12s. So what we're going to do is we're going to rip them in half and then do straightening cuts and then uh, I'm going to plane one surface down. I'm going to groove and glue my plywood today. So I'm going to show you how we're going to fake our tongue groove for the last two sections of our roof. <laughs> 